So while in the workshop we're going to work with some exercises to break that open in each one of your lives independently and we'll do some meditation and I'm going to give you some tools and concepts to take with you as a way to bring that into your daily life. Here and now I'd like to just give you one fun example of penetrating to the essence of my story. And I thought it would be fun to use one of my monastery stories. So um, as Mary had said, I was a nun for over 10 years. And uh, I was attracted deeply to the Carmelite charism because my mystical experiences could find a home in the mysticism that I found there. It resonated with me. And the monastery I chose was in North Dakota. And the reason I chose it, were, there were a couple reasons. We lived off the land. It was a vibrant community. There were 20 nuns there of all different ages. And they really had a deep dedication to meditation, chant, and silence. We got up at midnight. We got up again at 5.30. We'd be you know, in meditation and chant for like three hours. Then you do a little work break. You come back, some more juicy meditation and chant. Then a little work. Then we come back eight times throughout the day. So really the day revolved around that one thing necessary, the one thing that really ignited my heart. And since at that time I had this raging love affair going on, to plunge myself into that degree of silence was incredibly appealing because I wanted it all. I wanted to experience all the aspects of myself that were willing to come forward. I wanted to taste any experience that could possibly happen when I found myself in that level of solitude. And believe me, when you're in silence without any <laughs> break, you encounter all sorts of aspects of yourself. <laughs> so this one story is a really good one. So not only did we have our tasks, like I worked in the kitchen, everyone had something to help the community be sustaining, but we had tasks that rotated each week, like who led the chant, who read the books at table, who turned on and off lights. And these would be announced at the beginning of each week. And, and uh, one of those tasks was turning on the light. Oh, I was Catholic, and so there was a tabernacle and a sanctuary, and you turn on that light every time we were going in to do anything together, and you turn off the light any time you were going out. And that rotated through. You got that you know, maybe like once a month, once every two months. And about a year into my life as a nun, I had come to a place where I felt inspired to say, take me to the new level. <laughs> and when I did that, one of my signs was that, and we didn't have computers and cell phones and all that, but one of my signs was that my clock went completely haywire and I was completely undependable for waking anybody up or being on time. <laughs> but, <laughs> but what happened is I, I got the tabernacle light duty right after I had made that request. And for the life of me, the very first day, I could not remember to turn the light off. And now that sounds extremely trivial. <laughs> we'd go in, I remember to flip it on, we'd do our thing, we'd come out, we prostrated, we genuflected, we held doors, and, and every time we walked out that door, something would distract me from remembering that. Now, this is even funnier, because we live in silence, nobody could come and get me. And so somehow the leader of the community, called a priorist, would always find out. And throughout the monastery, you would hear my Morse code. That was my code. When I heard that, I knew I forgot the light again. <laughs> and so did everybody else. <laughs> and I like raced through the corridors to, to turn off a light. <laughs> well, I thought, this is my chance. What am I supposed to learn? So first I just did the normal things, like I'd write myself a note. And of course then, you know, the note would get crumpled in my hand because the sister in front of me would trip a little and I'd get distracted. <laughs> and then I came up, I made up these little jingles that I would sing inside my head to try to remember, like little, turn off the light, de -dee, de -dee, de -dee. and every time I got to the door, totally forget. So nothing I tried on a practical realm worked. And so then I'm like, okay, what needs to be healed in me? Like, help me learn about my barriers to this. So I'm opening myself on all these other levels, and nothing's coming forward. <laughs> no big trauma or block or anything. 
And this went on for months. <laughs> My incompetency, and it's broadcasting. <laughs> And one evening, I went to our time in meditation, and I'm, I'm kneeling there in the silence. And out of nowhere, that continual failing to fulfill what was asked of me, God's will, and that continual failing in my community, as small as it was, it became kind of big. And I sunk.